Houston, we have a problem. It, it's the Texans, but the Packers have an issue too. Welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. This could have been avoided if they just signed me as wide receiver Juan Grassi. And today, oh, this is called a sequel. Uh, a sequel to a video that I was hoping to not make as I made a video on August 7th, 2020, right before the 2020 season, titled, The Packers Will Have a Wide Receiver Problem. And guess what? The Packers now have a huge wide receiver problem. Before we get into that, I want to do a big shout and thank you to a brand new patron and YouTube member. First on the Patreon side of things, we have a Kevin Barrett, a big shout out and thank you to you. And the new YouTube member, we got Logan Davies, a big shout out and thank you to you both. So the reason for my video nearly two years ago was I decided to, to look ahead and take a look at some wide receiver contracts that were going to be expiring sometime soon. And during that time, if you recall, a lot of people were saying the Packers had a wide receiver problem, but it was for the 2020 season that they didn't have enough playmakers, Devontae Adams couldn't do it all, and then the Packers became the number one scoring offense in the NFL that year. That's not what the video was about. Instead, the video was looking at past the 2021 season, which we just passed, how many contracts actually expired for our wide receivers? And the answer was nearly all of them. And so in that video, I detailed how the Packers needed to either do it through free agency or the draft, most likely the draft so they can get some young talent. They needed to acquire some wide receivers because otherwise they would be screwed. Now, what have the Packers done in that time? Well, they traded for Randall Cobb. On top of that, they went and drafted Amari Rodgers, and they got a few other guys like Jawan Winfrey. And so now, where are the Packers? In trouble is the answer, because here we are at the end of the 2021 season, and the Green Bay Packers have a lot of wide receivers that could very much leave the team. So just to give you a list here, these are the unrestricted free agents. So these are the guys who were able to sign with any single team. Of course, you have Devontae Adams, Equinemia St. Brown, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, otherwise known as MVS. So those guys are free to sign wherever the heck they want. Our restricted free agents, Alan Lazard, and our exclusive rights free agent, we have Malik Turner. So folks, if you're keeping track at home, that means that our current roster with wide receivers will be Randall Cobb, uh, Jawan Winfrey, and Amari Rogers. So if every single one of those wide receivers leave because we have terrible cap issues, yeah, guess what? Our wide receiver room is looking mighty thin. Now, of course, the big story of the offseason is going to be Devontae Adams. Before this past season, the Packers and Devontae Adams were trying to work through a deal. However, contract negotiations stalled, and then they ended. And so now we're left going, what the hell is going to happen? There's lots of rumors that the Packers are going to use a franchise tag on Devontae Adams. However, given our cap space, we need to clear $20.1 million in order for that to happen, which is very unlikely for it to happen before the deadline. And so things are swirling all over the place. I think the best way that Devontae Adams Adams actually returns to the team is going to be through a long-term contract, which I don't know if the Packers can actually offer Devontae Adams, considering Devontae Adams is very insistent that he is the highest paid wide receiver in the league. And right off that bat, there's problems there because you look at DeAndre Hopkins and what he's making, but it's added on to his previous deal. And so basically he's looking for $30 million a year. And I just don't know if the Packers are going to be willing to pay that. In addition, you look at a guy like Equinemia St. Brown, who I don't think the market for him is going to be very robust, but at the same time, I mean, hell, he can go to Detroit and play with his brother. Or even if you do sign him, he hasn't proven enough to be a solid number two or number three guy, even though I like how they've been using him with jet sweeps and some various plays. Equinemia St. Brown's not the guy. Then you have a guy like Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who is our speed guy in which he can stretch the field. However, he's had injury issues, unable to stay on the field. On top of that, there's been some inconsistencies consistent play there. And so looking at all our unrestricted free agents, if all of these guys wind up walking, the Green Bay Packers are left with some significant problems. You do have Alan Lazard as a restricted free agent, which simply just means that we can match any offer that Alan Lazard is offered by another team. So if another team decides to throw a bunch of money at him, we're probably not going to match that. And of course, you have your exclusive rights free agents in Malik Turner, which means that they're going to be able to get him for basically a veteran minimum. So 
right now, looking at our current squad of Randall Cobb, who is likely going to get cut because he's a $9.6 million cap hit. That's problematic, so he's most likely gone. You have Jawan Winfrey, who is a restricted free agent after this coming season, and then you have Amari Rodgers, who's on his rookie deal. So, folks, Randall Cobb's probably not going to be on the team, so that leaves us with Jawan Winfrey and Amari Rodgers. Now, we did just pick up some guys in Rico Gafford and Chris Blair, but we know nothing about them at all, and here we are with a huge problem on our hands. Now, you might be saying, Tom, if we're able to somehow crunch the numbers and make it work and Russ Ball could do some magic, if we get Devontae Adams back, we'll be all set because that's all we need. Well, here's the problem, folks. The issue is that even if somehow, some way, we get Devontae Adams back, the issue is more than just these contracts expiring because there is a vacuum that is on the Green Bay Packers wide receiver core of a lack of developed talent in which you brought in Randall Cobb because Aaron Rodgers wanted him. And listen, he had absolutely some clutch throws. However, he had injury issues and really didn't help in the playoffs considering that Aaron Rodgers didn't even look at him. You have Juwan Winfrey who had that game against the Cardinals where he had to start because we were missing our top three wide receivers. And then Amari Rodgers, he barely had any playing time because we brought in Randall Cobb. So there are so many issues here, and the Green Bay Packers, I will be very honest, have done a terrible job of addressing this because this was something, the writing has been on the wall for two years in which we're looking at this going, hey guys, after the 2021 season, we're in trouble. Like we definitely need to bring in some wide receivers and they have not addressed it. More importantly, they haven't developed anybody. So even if the Packers, they just swing for the fences and they draft multiple wide receivers in the draft, one, they have to hit home runs on them. And two, they need time to actually develop to be contributing to the actual team. So the Packers are in a really rough spot because it's not only who do you bring back and spend more money on, you're going to need to make a decision between your wide receiver room and then take a look at the defense and what guys you want to bring back there. There's guys on that defense whose contracts are pretty damn big. And so the Packers are not only going to have to navigate some cap issues this season and make some tough decisions, as Matt LaFleur said, but they're also going to figure out whether it's Jordan Love or Aaron Rodgers who the hell they're going to throw to. And the other issues with a lot of these wide receivers is you look like an EQ, you look at MVS, you look at Alan Lazard. These guys are good football players, don't get me wrong, and some of them have come in very, very clutch this year. Alan Lazard had an amazing run to end the season, just not in the playoffs, because again, Aaron Rodgers didn't really look at him. But you look at each of these individuals, and they're really just role players here, right? In which Alan Lazard, you know, he's not amazing at anything, but he's a clutch guy. You have MVS, who's the speedster, in which he's going to stretch the field, but that's what he's known for. Equinemius St. Brown isn't really used a whole lot, but could be used in a couple of different schemes. And Devontae Adams is really the only guy here who could do it all when it comes to receivers. He can be a boundary receiver. He can be a deep threat. He could do all that stuff, and a lot of that stems from his relationship with Aaron Rodgers, and they just have that built chemistry over years and years and years. You look at all these other guys, though, they just have like those one or two skill sets, and that's about it. And again, that's not knocking anybody, but you do need some diversity when it comes to your receiving core. Because when your receivers do go down, like the Arizona game, yes, the Packers were able to win, but they won by running the football. And on top of that, Aaron Rodgers had one of his worst statistical games of the season against the Arizona Cardinals. You had the 2018 draft, which was Brian Gutekunst's first draft, and he swung and tried to get a bunch of receivers. For example, he went and got Jamon Moore in the fourth round. He turned out to be a bust. Fifth round was MVS, who definitely provided a lot more value than the fifth round, so that was a good pick. And you got Equinemius St. Brown, who was a sixth round pick, who again has provided some great stuff here and there, but has not been consistent and hasn't consistently seen the field. So right now, the Packers are not only in some tough situations, but they need to now look at the future of their team. And they may be replacing a franchise quarterback, a franchise wide receiver, and the majority of their wide receiver core. So this offense can look very, very different. The Packers have definitely gone after tight ends over the years, whether it was Jay Sternberger or Robert Tunyon or Josiah DeGuerra. We also look at Aaron Jones and how involved he is in the passing game. And again, these aren't bad things, but they are running backs for a reason. They can be dual threats, and A.J. Dillon is picking it up in the passing game as well. 
but to not have receivers who can do it all to get guys who do have the speed, who could stretch the field and can be boundary catchers to find another Devontae Adams. The Packers haven't really even made an attempt to do so. And I hate to sound like one of those guys of like, oh, they need to draft a wide receiver in the first round because I don't. The Packers have had amazing success in the second round getting guys like Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson, and Devontae Adams. However, they really have just stopped drafting guys that early, the most recent one being Amari Rodgers, who was a third round pick, who was a relatively safe pick. He didn't really have that flash or anything like that. But the Packers do need to invest some draft capital in wide receivers so we can hopefully be set at the future of the position. Because if we have these guys leave, we are not set. And I'm sorry, but a wide receiver core of Jawan Winfrey and Amari Rodgers, two guys who have barely seen the field, is not a good look and is going to be a struggle for the offense to get their passing game going. So it'll be very interesting to see how the Packers are able to navigate through this, again, with all their cap issues and deciding on which guys to actually bring back. I think a lot of that is going to depend on if Aaron Rodgers comes back, because if Rodgers comes back, well, then you're going to try to get as many of these guys as possible to also return so you can have a chance of getting to a Super Bowl again. But if Rodgers winds up leaving, you're not only going to see, I think, a big shift in terms of who's throwing the football, but who they're actually throwing the ball to, because I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of these guys actually don't return. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How do you feel about this situation? Do you think the Packers, who have holes in other areas, they think they should go after some wide receivers in this next draft? Let me know. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or TomGrossyComedy on all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go back, go. Go back, go.